Hello, I'm Andrew Gillis, more commonly known as Gamma Zero in the uh, uh, various uh, forums and GitHub. And today I'm going to be talking about the network indexer, which is an important component of a, a, a content routing system. So let me share my screen and we'll get started. So the network indexer, what is a network indexer? Well, a network indexer is a node that stores mappings of CIDs to provider data records. Uh, this is um, what allows us to find, con find where content can actually be retrieved from. So uh, think of an indexer like a very specialized uh, key value store. It has two primary groups of users. That's the storage providers and the retrieval clients. Storage providers uh, want to advertise their content by storing data in the indexer. Um, the indexer handles this with ingest logic. Uh, retrieval clients want to query the indexer to find which storage providers have content and how to retrieve that content from those storage providers. So that's part of the indexer's find logic. So how do these uh, different user groups interact with an indexer? Uh, so just start with the basics. Uh, a storage deal is, um, is created by a storage client. Uh, so data is stored on a storage provider. Uh, when a storage provider has that data, it's going to announce that it has new content. Uh, it does that by publishing um, a, the CID of a special record called an advertisement. And it lets the indexers know that it has this, this new content to be uh, to be indexed. Um, this is normally published over a, a gossip pub sub, um, usually through the mainnet nodes. Uh, it can also be published to indexers directly via HTTP. So once the storage writer announces it, uh, that gets to the indexers, and then the indexers want to sync that new content. So the sync portion of the uh, of ingest means that we're going to go ahead and read the all of these um, the latest advertisement records from a storage provider. And uh, we're going to get the uh, information that we want to index. That includes a context ID, metadata, and uh, all the multi hashes which map to that data. So we'll talk a bit more about what the ingest process involves in, in a bit. So once the uh, indexer nodes uh, ingest the data, and now they've, inde they've actually indexed all of this content for the storage provider, a client can then uh, query the, the indexer to find where that content is and how to get it. So a client uh, is going to issue a query for a CID or a multi-hash, uh, and the indexer is going to look up uh, the uh, provider information for that, uh, for that CID, and it's going to respond uh, with one or more provider records, well, if it has any, um, to the client and say, here are all the providers that provide this, this content and information about how to go retrieve that content from each of those providers. So then the client can go to the storage provider and retrieve the content. Um, it's uh, going to, part of the information in the, uh, in the record that it received from the indexer was uh, information about what protocol to use, so graph sync, bit swap. And then the client's going to send that provider record that it got from the indexer back to the storage provider, which allows the storage provider to uh, look into whatever content is in that uh, record to use it to find the data that's being requested. That's maybe a, like a, a deal ID or maybe some internal um, record keys, or whatever, whatever it may be. So here it is all together. Um, in one, one picture, uh, just to see all the different uh, interactions that, uh, that are ha happening with indexer nodes. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the ingest, uh, just to give you an idea more about how indexing works. So uh, ingest really consists of two parts, uh, the publish of uh, the announcing of the availability of more uh, content to index, and then the sync, which is actually the, where the indexer is pulling in that content and creating the, the index uh, uh, for that content. It's called sync because we're basically synchronizing up to the latest state in a uh, chain of, of advertisements, which are um, the records of 
of content that are available. So the first part is the publish, a little more detail on that. The announce message is what gets uh, broadcast out from the uh, publisher to the indexer. Um, it's usually sent over Gossip Pub Sub, but we, but we can also send it via HTTP. This is already uh, built into uh, Lotus clients and it will be able to, um, over Gossip Pub Sub, send this to the mainnet nodes, which then relay uh, that, that publication um, to the indexers. The indexers then uh, get this uh, announcement message, which contains a CID of the advertisement that's being announced and along with the, the publisher's address, which is where to retrieve the advertisement record from. Um, and that allows them to go get that information. Indexers can also ignore uh, publications if they already happen to have the, the advertisement. They may have synced it from a previous, from another publication or from a direct announcement or, or from any number, any number of different ways they may have been notified. Um, so additional announcements don't cause additional work. So note about the, what the publisher is. Uh, we say provider and publisher, but uh, when talking about indexing, it's important to realize that the publisher can be different from the storage provider. So specifically the publisher is the entity that publishes the advertisement records. In other words, the content that is being indexed. Um, generally it's the same as the storage provider, uh, but it does not have to be. Other, other entities can publish on behalf of one or more storage providers. Um, and there's policies to control uh, which publishers are allowed and publishers uh, can assign advertisements uh, if they're creating, they may create those advertisements on behalf of the storage provider and a publisher can sign those advertisements. We'll talk about advertisement signing a bit more. Anyway, the sync process works like this. Uh, we have a chain of, of advertisements that also have entries associated with them. Uh, this forms an IPLD graph. So the uh, ingestion reads the uh, chains uh, from the latest, uh, the most recent that's been announced all the way back to uh, the, either the end of the chain or at least till the, uh, whatever advertisement the indexer has already ingested. Um, so it reads the whatever part of the chain it doesn't have yet and then processes it uh, in order. So from oldest to newest so that we can uh, apply the updates you know, properly and come out with the, the correct state. Um, so advertisements are signed, including the links. Uh, what this does is create a blockchain-like structure. Um, and, the, uh, and so the, all of the advertisements and all of their, their uh, associated content hashes all become immutable and, um, and they're all signed as well. So we, can we have a, a chain that we can verify um, every, uh, every portion of and uh, and, and we have immutable data then that we can make sure we, uh, we can see that the proper signatures are applied. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, context ID and metadata, which were mentioned earlier. So a context ID is what uniquely identifies uh, metadata in the provider record. So the metadata is the portion that says uh, how to get the, the content and um, and then some opaque data, which is uh, sent back to the storage provider that tells the storage provider where to look it up, and like a, a DLID, or um, internal record key, et cetera. So uh, by using a context ID on uh, the provider ID, we have a globally unique ID uh, that, in, that tells us, uh, a, that gives us a piece of metadata for, for the provider. Um, so the context ID is what a provider uses to be able to update any of its metadata um, or delete that or, or delete its records. So the context ID, uh, uh, once, it's, uh, once an advertisement has been published with the context ID and uh, we can publish a subsequent advertisement, uh, context ID can be used to add multi-hashes. It can be used to, um, to uh, update the metadata and it can be used to remove um, all, of, all of the data associated with a context ID. So when we say, uh, update the metadata, that means anytime we query any of the multi-hashes pointing to the, the uh, provider record, um, the metadata that comes back, it'll always have the, the updated metadata. So uh, let's talk a little more about how an indexer stores data. 
So uh, indexing content means, well, what is, it means to create an index. And that means taking the input of a provider record and it's associated, all, all the associated multi-hashes that are uh, part of that data and inverting this to uh, be able to have multi-hashes, which then map back to that provider record. So that, in other words, we can look up the provider record uh, by using that, that multi-hash. And when I say multi-hash, it's synonymous with CID and multi-hash is just a CID without the, the codec portion. Um, so uh, we can look up the, the uh, provider record and, it, and a multi-hash can also refer to multiple provider records, uh, provider record uh, and different providers can provide the same data, um, or maybe a provider has the same data in different deals, et cetera. So maybe available from, from multiple places. Well, well we, need, do we, we do need to update the metadata. So how does an indexer uh, refer to that? Uh, we don't want to have to do an update for every single multi-hash. That would be um, millions of multi-hashes potentially. So this is where the context ID comes in. The context ID is then used to uh, look up the um, or delete that provider record. So how do we? So what's that actual mapping look like if we if we need to refer to provider records both by metadata and provider ID? Well, we get basically we an indexer stores a, a two level mapping. So um, we uh, have any multi hash that maps to uh, each multi hash maps to a list of uh, provider keys, and then each provider key maps to the individual provider record. Um, and by doing this, we can now be able to index uh, provider records by multi-hash um, or by the context ID. And let's talk about uh, say indexer data sharing. So indexers uh, are able to share data with each other. Uh, they can share the discovered providers and publishers, um, or they can discover providers and publishers from other indexers. So if I look at uh, a provider's, uh, sorry, an indexer's set of providers, I can configure any other indexer to go and retrieve the providers from it so it can learn about them and then be able to exchange uh, indexing information with those providers or those, and those publishers. Indexers can also republish HTTP announcements to each other. So if you send a, a, an announcement directly to a single indexer via HTTP, that indexer can then be configured to uh, republish over gossip uh, pub sub to any other uh, indexers uh, that may want to receive the, those announcements. Um, and in those ex indexers like the main net nodes can also act as gossip pub sub relays. So what are the, the next steps in, in indexing? So we talked about how it works. What are, what, what are we going to be providing soon? Uh, we're going to be doing uh, advertisement chain snapshots, which is basically a mechanism of compressing advertisement chains. Uh, this means that we that uh, uh, publishers can have a much uh, can uh, replace their chains with a very compressed form and eventually truncate those chains so that they don't have to keep the data all the way back to the beginning of their very existence. Um, we can archive uh, chains uh, using car files, and this will allow us to bootstrap new indexers that are coming online. So we want, um, we want to start up a new indexer instead of having to read from each provider directly and ingest an entire chain of advertisements, we can read from an archive, which may be uh, available either from the provider or from some type of CDN, which we can then bootstrap our indexers. We're also working on, uh, on sharding by provider so that we can uh, spread ingestion across multiple nodes as well as sharding by multi-hash for storage and lookup across multiple nodes. So uh, when I say multiple nodes, generally uh, this is gonna be within a single deployment because we'll want to um, have more indexer deployments for more, local, more localized uh, content routing, but we still wanna be able to scale each of those deployments and we wanna scale them by spreading the work uh, across multiple nodes. And this is how, is it two, these are two different ways we divide up the work by uh, ingestion and by uh, storage. So just to give you some reference, uh, we have our current indexer implementation is store the index. The code is a publicly available on our GitHub repo. Um, the value store implementation, that's the portion that actually stores the index content, uh, is implemented by uh, go store the hash, 
which is being used because it's a highly efficient storage. Um, and it gives us a lot of advantages to storing uh, huge amounts of data very compactly. Um, although we can replace the value store by any other, uh, any other uh, store that implements the, the relatively simple uh, index or core interface. So we've actually used Pagreb. I think uh, we've actually tested with uh, some, some experiments with Postgres, but we can hook it up to anything if you, any, any other storage that you want, um, just have to implement the, uh, the interface. And um, so we have uh, also our, another repo that's worth mentioning is called Go Legs. It's, uh, it's what provides the uh, synchronization logic uh, to keep uh, indexers in sync with publishers. And uh, that's it for the, uh, what does an indexer do? How does it work and at a somewhat of a um, summary level? And I'd like to uh, ask if there's any questions or things that we want to discuss further at this point. One question, um, can you talk a little bit about the scale um, that the indexer is dealing with right now? Like how many records what fraction of the platform network does that represent? Yes, uh, let, me, let me go ahead and... Um, so we have um, about 26% uh, of the, uh, of the uh, providers that we're currently indexing. We actually have uh, stats that we're keeping on our dashboard here and so we can uh, point to some of these. So about 26% uh, percent of the, uh, of the uh, providers uh, and uh, it's about 23% of the deals. Um, there's other, uh, I think that's gonna be discussed uh, in other presentations in more detail. Um, so yes, we have a number, we'd like to keep adding a lot more providers and we'll be growing the number of providers and also the amount of data that each uh, provider will be indexing, of course. So we are uh, still ramping up and you can actually look at the the size of the, the index. This is um, this is the current size. We're at about uh, three and a half terabytes. Uh, let me expand the time on this a little bit so you can see a bit more linear graph. Let's go. So the this uh, sawtooth is just the uh, garbage collection, but you can see how it's been growing um, over the week. We've gone from around. Uh, 3.2 to around 3.5 uh, terabytes. And so uh, a third to a half of a terabyte per week is a pretty substantial growth rate, but we're actually still running this on a single node and um, not having any problems with either in, uh, with either the uh, storage or the um, speed of the, of the responses. Anyway, not sure if that, that probably <laughs> answered or tried to explain a lot more in your question than me. Um, one question, how can, um, can IPFS, um, large pending services and so on connect to the indexer? Um, or, or yes. So, uh, that the way that's done is, uh, there's a, what's called a reframe, um, uh, client. And so a reframe client is part of the, uh, content routing system. And that's going to be what's responsible for, uh, working side by side with the DHT. And it's going to uh, ask uh, indexer nodes where, uh, where CIDs are available from so that they can also uh, stream the answers coming from indexers uh, as part of the, the content uh, finding solution. That's a good segue. All right, thanks. Yeah, I, I have a question, if I might. Uh, yes. How, how do you see, like, will uh, you always run the indexers, or do you foresee maybe application developers who will run the indexers for their own like application? For example, I, I, I'm doing something big, some like Telegram or some service, and I might run my own indexer, and so there would be a hierarchy of indexers. Or something. Do, you, do you like plan for something like that? So, in there, for the general indexing, it's probably going to be a few different providers of indexing services that are essentially going to index. Uh, everything, but yes, there there are business models where uh, a, a particular uh, entity will want to do their own indexing, and so it, it maybe for internal consumption, or may, maybe they have a specialized client to look up data uh, 
in within their services. And so they'll they'll index all of their their content, um, or maybe the maybe they'll index the content of certain providers that they're partnering with. Um, so if, if, for example, a, a, a service that provides some sort of uh, data storage and retrieval, maybe they partner with certain uh, uh, Filecoin uh, storage providers. And so they index the content that, they, uh, that, they're, um, that they're serving out. And they, that may be something that they keep internally. Um, but there, as far as a hierarchy of, of indexers, um, that actually gets into a lot more difficult models like uh, how do you, you know, do you trust them uh, how do you distribute how do you just determine which one has uh, which portion of the, the key space so uh, really there's at this point we're looking at having um, general indexers and then specific indexers that are for specific purposes and, and the clients that use those specific indexers will either be explicitly configured to use them um, by whoever is whoever's services um, is providing those indexers. Right, thank you. How, you? Another question for How do you store efficiently hashes? They are basically random data. Ah, yes. So the hashes are stored efficiently uh, by storing only the, the portion of the hash that has the, um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the longest matching prefix of any other hash. So if you think of all of this hash data, we don't actually store any of the, the hash data other than the part other, other than the minimum necessary to differentiate it from any other hash. Um, so that's that's part of that's a, the main part of the solution. Um, uh, and then how we we index those records on on disks uh, on disks and things like that allows for a fairly efficient uh, uh, find and lookup of those. That's the basic idea: is not actually storing the whole hash. Uh, 